Have you ever gazed at the pale dome of Mount Diablo from the Bay Area and wondered where it came from? Could a mountain sitting smack in Northern California really have started life in an ancient ocean thousands of miles away? Is there something unusual hidden beneath its rocky flanks? And could a rumble on another continent somehow awaken this seemingly benign peak? These are the intriguing questions scientists ask when they study Diablo's strange story. This mountain isn't a volcano, yet its geology is stranger than one. It turns out Diablo's rocks were born on faraway ocean crust and carried north on tectonic currents, only to be squeezed up by collisions in the Pacific Plate boundary. Unraveling that tale requires diving into California's shifting plates and hidden faults, an epic history that moves mountains literally. Geologists describe California's coast ranges as a jigsaw puzzle of wayward crustal pieces, and Mount Diablo is one of the wildest pieces. Deep beneath the Bay Area, the North American and Pacific plates grind past each other along transformed faults like the San Andreas. But Diablo's core predates that sideways motion by hundreds of millions of years. Its oldest rocks formed on ocean floors, not continents. In the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods around 150 to 165 million years ago, molten rock welled up at seafloor spreading zones and volcanic arcs out in the ancient Pacific. Those pillow basalts and gabbros, the building blocks of ocean crust, later metamorphosed into greenstone and serpentinite found today on Diablo's flanks. Tiny shells of planktonic organisms fell to the seafloor and turned into banded chert, flinty rock that is visible high up on the mountain. All this oceanic crust and marine mud were carried northeast on the Farallon Plate, the precursor of the Pacific Plate as it ploughed under the North American continent. Over tens of millions of years, the Farallon Plate slid eastward, scraping these fragments off at its western margin. By the late Cretaceous, the top layers of that former seafloor had already been plastered onto the edge of the continent. In effect, Diablo's foundation is a relic of an old ocean that has been glued onto North America. By about 30 million years ago, the Farallon Plate had vanished beneath the continent and California's coastline became the boundary of the Pacific Plate instead. At that point, subduction gave way to sliding motion, the famous San Andreas Transform System, and California entered the world of strike-slip earthquakes. But even after most of the seafloor was long consumed, the story was not over. A few million years ago, the nature of that plate boundary changed again. Slight compression was introduced into the motion of the plates, essentially squeezing California from the northwest. The result was uplift, the birth of mountains and valleys. Faults on the diagonal trending northwest-southeast crumpled the crust. In this late Cenozoic compression, strips of crust tilted and faulted upward. Mount Diablo itself began to rise. In fact, the rocky peak you see today didn't break high above its neighbours until roughly 500,000 years ago, a relative newborn by geologic standards. As uplift took hold, streams peeled away the weaker cap of sedimentary rocks that once hid Diablo's ancient core. Eventually, the mass of greenstone and serpentinite and chert that underlies Diablo poked through, forming the summit you see today. In short, old rocks from a Jurassic ocean now sit on top of younger rocks, a sure sign of thrust faulting and very recent uplift. Today, the evidence of that violent lift is everywhere. You can find melon-shaped pillow basalts weathering to clays at outcrops around Eagle Peak. Bands of glistening bluish serpentinite, altered mantle rock, line the north ridge, marking the path where ocean mantle slid up on oceanic crust. 
In one roadside outcrop near the summit, you can reach out and touch dark, bluish-green blocks of blue-schist-cooled high-pressure basalt that formed deep in a subduction trench long ago. All those exotic minerals and layers tell the tale. Diablo's core started life far south and under sea, got scraped off the Farallon plate, rode north with continental drift, and was thrust skyward by compressing plate motions. It is literally the mountain that was on the move. Locked beneath Mount Diablo is a hidden thrust fault, in fact, California's own little southern San Andreas, metaphorically. This blind thrust fault dips to the northeast beneath Diablo's summit and is directly responsible for shoving the old seafloor over the younger sediments. Geologists have even mapped this Mount Diablo thrust fault using seismic and gravity data. It lies buried with no clear break at the surface, but it drives motion in the Eastern Bay area. It intersects or connects nearby right lateral faults the Calaveras Fault to the southwest and the Greenville-Clayton Fault Zone to the southeast, and it links up to the Concord Green Valley Faults to the north. Essentially, Diablo's thrust transfers slip from the Calaveras-Greenville system into the Concord Fault. The net effect is shortening of the crust at a rate of only a few millimetres per year, Geologists estimate about two to three millimetres per year of horizontal shortening on the Diablo thrust, roughly 0 0.08 to 0 0.12 inches per year, and about one millimetre of uplift per year, roughly 0 0.04 inches per year. In plain terms, every year, Mount Diablo gets about one millimetre or about one twenty fifth of an inch taller. That motion adds up. The thrust fault under Diablo is roughly 25 kilometres long, about 15 and a half miles, and steep, dipping around 38 degrees. In theory, it could rupture in an earthquake up to roughly magnitude 6.7, releasing accumulated stress as enough slip on the fault to break the surface. Luckily, no large quake has been unequivocally tied to this hidden fault in modern history. It lies too deep, the modelled rupture starts some eight kilometres underground, about five miles, to leave obvious traces on the surface. But such blind thrusts can still wreak havoc. One of California's deadliest earthquakes, the 1994 Northridge quake in Southern California, was on a hidden thrust. Since Diablo's thrust fault underlies towns like Concord, Antioch, Brentwood and Walnut Creek, even a moderate quake there could do serious damage. Geologists think the recurrence for a big quake on this fault could be on the order of centuries, roughly 400 years or so for a magnitude around 6.7. Around Diablo, other familiar faults lace the landscape. Just north of the mountain lies the Concord Fault, a short but busy strike-slip fault running toward the Carquinez Strait. It connects the eastern end of the Hayward-Rogers Creek system south of Concord, with the Green Valley Fault out toward the delta. Although only about 12 miles long, about 19 kilometres, it is loaded by being squeezed between bigger faults. In fact, historical records show Concord has jolted into life several times. The biggest recorded Concord quake was magnitude 5.4 60 years ago, in October 1955. The fault also produced a magnitude 3.6 event in July 2000 and lighter jolts in 2015. In May 2015, a swarm of little quakes, none over about magnitude 3.6, rattled the town of Concord, catching people's attention by occurring in a cluster under the city. Essentially not much damage, but evidence that Concord is active. Statisticians even give it a few percent chance of shaking up a magnitude 6.7, about a two to three mile fault rupturing quake, roughly three to five kilometers in the next 30 years. 
To the southeast of Diablo, the Green Valley Clayton Marsh Creek Greenville Fault Zone tracks roughly along the floor of eastern Contra Costa County. This right lateral fault complex is actually responsible for the big shocks in the Livermore area. In January 1980, the Greenville Clayton segment produced two surprise quakes a magnitude 5.8 on January 24th and a magnitude 5.6 just three days later. These were centered around Livermore, about 15 miles, roughly 25 kilometers southwest of Diablo. Both quakes ruptured a bit of the surface along the Clayton Greenville line and caused rock slides and some structural damage, quite notable since California almost never sees double quakes in one week. Those shocks were directly on the Greenville Fault, which today still slowly creeps and occasionally twitches. Further south, the Calaveras Fault, a major boundary through the East Bay, continues the trend, dipping into the Calaveras Reservoir and Santa Clara Valley. On Calaveras, a mid-September 1979 rupture brought a magnitude 5.7, and in 1984, a magnitude 6.0 occurred south of it at Morgan Hill. While those are a bit distant, they reflect the same fault network that pushes Diablo. Together, Concord, Greenville and Calaveras faults form a half-bent array around Diablo, with compressive stress building in between. In short, Mount Diablo sits at the heart of a web of Bay Area faults. It is being squeezed by the Bay Area plate boundary and rising steadily on its own thrust. Its growth is the very definition of California's tectonic vigor. If you found this breakdown valuable, please take a moment to like the video, share it with others who enjoy deep dive science content, and subscribe to the channel for more evidence-based explorations of our dynamic planet. Don't forget to tap the hype icon. It helps push this video to a wider audience and supports the work that goes into each episode. Special thanks to one of our long-time and loyal supporters who recommended this topic. Your continued engagement helps shape the direction of this channel. If there's a subject you'd like us to investigate next, drop it in the comments. Your ideas drive future episodes.